stop buying bad CPU and GPU combos. Let's get you the best CPU and GPU combo 2024. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. 2024 is another great year to build a PC as CPU and GPU prices continue to fall. But I see so many people missing out on the best CPU and GPU combo for gaming and productivity. It's hard enough to understand the best CPU for gaming and the best GPU for gaming by themselves. Combining them together for the best CPU and GPU combo, it's even harder. Today, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know, and we're gonna give specific product recommendations at every budget level to get you the best CPU and GPU combo for gaming 2024. Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe, click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Let's talk about bottlenecking, which just means that one of our components, it's limiting our performance. And if we could upgrade that component to make it faster, then our overall system performance would increase. Now the typical bottleneck for a gaming PC build is the CPU versus the GPU. If our CPU is too slow to keep up with our GPU, then increasing the speed of the CPU, they give us more FPS. If our GPU on the other hand is our bottleneck, then getting a faster GPU instead will increase our performance. Now the CPU, it's more likely to bottleneck when we're pushing huge amounts of frames and our GPU is usually the bottleneck when we turn up the resolution from 1080p to 1440p to 4K, including if the GPU does not have enough VRAM to run the latest AAA titles on release at higher ultra settings. But here's the thing that even experienced PC builders get wrong. No matter what, our system will always have a bottleneck. It's our job as PC builders to understand how to maximize our PC build performance, whether that's in gaming, it's in streaming, video editing, or heavy multi-threaded workloads. Once we figure that out, we wanna spend most of our budget on the component that's bottlenecking our performance. For gaming, we wanna maximize our FPS. That means getting the fastest GPU that we can afford while only spending enough on a CPU that it's not gonna bottleneck the graphics card. And the less you have to spend, the more important it is to get the balance right. If we had all the monies, of course, we'd just get the best CPU and GPU period and spend about $4,000 for the ultimate gaming PC. But most of you out there, you have a set amount that you can spend. So choosing the best CPU and GPU combo are gonna heavily impact your gaming performance. Remember that as we go up in CPU core count, we also need to add in more cooling and especially for Intel CPUs, we probably need to buy a better motherboard, which also costs more money, along with the price differences between DDR4 and DDR5 RAM. So we'll take all of this into consideration. For example, say we wanna build a gaming PC with a Ryzen 5600 CPU and an RX 6650XT 8 gigabyte GPU, and then we decide to increase our budget another $100 to play at 1440p. Where should we spend it? Well, we could upgrade the CPU to a Ryzen 7600, which overall is quite a bit faster than the Ryzen 5600. But at this GPU performance level, it's only gonna give us slightly more FPS because our GPU is the bottleneck, not the CPU. So we just spent an extra $100 on the Ryzen 7600, not to mention more on the DDR5 RAM and more expensive AM5 motherboard as well for about a 5% increase in FPS, not great. Instead, if we spent that extra $100 to jump up to an RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU, and we kept our Ryzen 5600 CPU, we'd pick up about 30% more FPS because we're spending our money smartly by upgrading the component that's bottlenecking our performance. We'll also jump up from eight gigabytes of VRAM on our GPU to 12 gigabytes on VRAM, which ensures we can run the latest AAA titles on release with ultra settings and not run into any VRAM issues, even at 1440p. And remember that as we go up in resolution from 1080p to 1440p to 4K, that increases the load on the GPU and decreases the load on the CPU, so it makes even more sense to upgrade the GPU. Now, when considering bottlenecks, there are two important areas to think about. The first is VRAM the amount of video RAM on your GPU as we've already discussed. And we go over in much more detail in our best GPU for gaming 2024 video, which we'll link down in the video description if you want a deeper dive. For no compromises 1080p and 1440p gaming, we recommend at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM in 2024. So while budget GPU shoppers have to contend with eight gigs of VRAM, I recommend moving up to at least 10, but more likely 12 gigabyte GPUs even over slightly faster GPU with only eight gigabytes of VRAM. And I'm looking at you, RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti eight gigabyte. The second thing to consider is GPU driver overhead. Now we've seen repeated testing that AMD GPUs require less CPU resources than Nvidia GPUs, which just comes down to driver overhead. Well, the difference is they're not huge. 
they are noticeable with lesser CPUs. So we've taken that into account in our recommendations. Here's my quick warning about future proofing, because this is the number one cause of bad CPU and GPU combos for gaming. Now, some people still think that you should future proof your CPU by buying a faster one than you need right now, so that in two to five years time, when you do upgrade your GPU, you get slightly more FPS out of it. In my opinion, while there are some decisions like this to be made at the budget level and high end, for most systems, this strategy would mean sacrificing an entire GPU tier's worth of performance. So for instance, getting an RX 7600 XT instead of a much faster RX 7800 XT. So the future-proofing strategy costs you FPS right now to maybe get slightly more FPS in two to five years time. The one exception I can see is if you're right on the budget line between getting an older CPU like the Ryzen 5600X or jumping up to the newer Ryzen 7600, which is going to be upgradable with drop-in CPU upgrades in the future. In the end, this is your call because after all, it's your money. But if you want to maximize FPS for your money spent, then focus on maximizing current performance. But what about production or creator workloads that need more CPU power? Well, for these use cases, we want more balance, but it depends heavily on the types of programs that we're using. Take video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Well, going up from four cores is nice, Premiere still tends to max out on how many CPU cores and threads it's going to use at once. So going overkill on your CPU at the expense of your GPU which is still very much needed for video editing, it might actually set your performance back. Meanwhile, other programs, they can use all the CPU resources that you can throw at them, and they don't use the GPU very much at all. That's why it's so important for professional users to understand their suite of software programs and the recommended system requirements so you can figure out the right CPU and GPU balance for your applications. Let's jump into our recommendations for best CPU and GPU combo for gaming 2024 and we'll go through both AMD Ryzen as well as Intel offerings. Note that we are expecting Zen 5 based Ryzen 9000 CPUs and 15 gen Intel CPUs to launch sometime in the fall of 2024, though we aren't expecting huge uplifts from the current generation. We do a monthly update video for both CPU and GPU pricing, so we'll leave those linked down in the video description. And of course, all the CPUs and GPUs are linked down there as well, so you can check current pricing and availability in your region. Starting off at the budget level, you can build a gaming PC right now for just about $550 US with all new parts. Now at this level, we really want the cheapest CPU platform that just won't bottleneck our GPU. Right now, Intel's i3-1200F and the AMD Ryzen 5500 are both excellent options paired with inexpensive motherboards, a $100 B660 for the i3-1200F and an $80 B450 for the Ryzen 5500. They both come with very good included CPU coolers and we're using both with a $35 kit of 2x8 gigabyte DDR4 3200CL16 RAM, though you can get a $50 kit of 3600CL16 if you end up with a little extra money left over. The total cost of these platforms is between $213 and $233. For a GPU, we could go all the way down to a used GTX 1078 GB for about $100, or on the new market, an Radeon RX 6600 for $199, an RTX 3050 for $220, or an Intel Arc A580 GPU for about $180. Note the RTX 3050 is considerably slower than those other GPUs, while the Intel GPUs they're still a bit fussy, and driver support is not yet at the level of AMD and NVIDIA for on-release titles. My advice, just avoid any GPU with less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Both the i3-1200F and Ryzen 5500, they're very capable gaming CPUs, and you can push them right up to about an RX 7700 XT or RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte performance, but that's essentially redlining them, and you'll want to look at a better CPU at that point. Here, I'd prioritize getting to a recent GPU with more than 8 gigabytes of VRAM if you can to be able to play the latest AAA titles on release at ultra settings. So the NVIDIA RTX 3060 12 gigabyte, AMD RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte, or an Intel Arc A770 16 gigabyte GPU. The next CPU CPU performance tier up that I would look to is either the AMD Ryzen 5600 for about $135 or the Intel i5 12400F currently selling for about $141. Now these CPUs, they have nearly identical performance and with a GPU like an RX 6700 XT or RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte, we'll see about a 10, maybe 15% FPS increase over the previous tier of CPUs. I'll leave links to our build guides for both down in the video description 
And note that it does appear that a lot of the early issues with the i5-12400 and cheaper B660 motherboards have been fixed through BIOS updates, so just make sure to update the BIOS. For the i5-12400, currently DDR4 motherboards like the ASRock B660M Pro RS or Gigabyte B760M DS3H sell for right around $100. For the Ryzen 5600, virtually any B550 motherboard with a VRM heatsink is absolutely fine. So something like the B550M DS3H AC, ASRock B550M Phantom Gaming, or the B550M Pro 4 with upgraded audio is great for about $100. We're also using slightly faster DDR4 3600 CL16 RAM, but if you want to save 15 bucks, you can use the same 3200 CL16 RAM kit from the previous combos. And both CPUs come with great included box coolers, but you can also spend about $20 here on any budget tower air cooler you want. This gives us an upgrade cost of between $72 and $78 over our previous tier of CPUs. For our GPU combo, I'd look at a minimum of an RX 6600, RTX 3050, or ARC A580 new GPU. These CPUs scale pretty well, but they do hit a wall right around the RX 7800 XT or RTX 4070, and at that point, you'll definitely want to jump up to the next tier of CPU performance. Note that if you do need more cores for productivity, you can consider the Ryzen 5700X or Intel i5-12600K, possibly the 13400, but they don't give much more gaming performance for the extra expense, and there's much better options as we'll go over next. Jumping up to our mid-range CPU and GPU combo, we basically have two options here. With current pricing, the best mostly gaming CPU, it's the Ryzen 7600 or 7600X for about $200 to $230. Currently, they're selling for about $199. If we need a hybrid gaming and production CPU, the i5-14600KF currently sells for the same price as the 13600KF at $285, but if the price drops on the 13600K, then I'd probably save a little bit of money there. We have build guides for both the Ryzen 7600 and i5-13600K, which is basically the same as the i5-14600K, and those guides cover things like the differences between the 7600 and 7600X, as well as the 13600K versus the 13600KF, so check them out for more details. These CPUs will give us about 25% more FPS using an RX 7800 XT or RTX 4070 over the previous tier in the Ryzen 5600 and i5-12400F. For our GPU combo, given how much we're spending on the CPU platform now, we want a minimum of an RX 7700 XT or RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, both right around $430 at the time of filming. We can take either of these CPUs all the way up to the RX 7900 XTX or even RTX 4090, but at that point, if we still have money left over in our budget, our only option for more performance is to upgrade the CPU because those are the fastest GPUs currently available. Now at current pricing, it's really hard to recommend the Intel build. As for that price, you can almost get the Ryzen 7800X3D instead, or you just dump that extra money into your GPU, which is probably the route that I would go. And the Ryzen 7600, it's gonna allow you to drop in a future CPU upgrade. Well, the 14 gen Intel, it's essentially end of life for that socket. I wanna give a quick honorable mention to the Ryzen 5700X3D and 5800X3D. Now at the time of filming, the 5700X3D has just launched for 249 and the 5800X3D remains around 300 to $320. If you're currently on AM4 with any non-X3D CPU, like a Ryzen 1000, 2000, 3000, even 5,000 non-X3D CPU, either the Ryzen 5700X3D or 5800X3D will deliver similar performance to the Ryzen 7600, often even beating it in really CPU intensive titles. So if I had one of those older Ryzen CPUs, even if I had to upgrade my RAM kit to the 3600 CL16 one for $50, so 300 total, that's potentially a very compelling upgrade. Now let's look at the current top tier of gaming CPUs in 2024. There are of course many options here, but for gaming, the main CPU for AMD is the Ryzen 7800X3D for around $390 though it often goes on sale for less. And for Intel, it's likely the i7-14700K or KF for about the same price. Even with DDR5 RAM, the i7-14700K trails the Ryzen 7800X3D slightly in gaming with ultra high-end GPUs like the RTX 4090, and it uses a ton more power and cooling. But the i7-14700K is significantly stronger if you do a ton of professional multi-threaded production applications in addition to gaming. Though for any normal person, the Ryzen 7800X3D is gonna be more CPU than they need anyway. Note the 13700K and KF sell for almost the same price as the 14700K and KF, and they do have fewer cores, so I just 
just skip them unless the price gets cut drastically. Compared to our previous tier of CPUs, the Ryzen 7800X 3D and i7-14700K can sometimes bring an uplift of up to 20% in some very CPU intensive titles using an ultra fast GPU, though at 1440p and 4K in many games, we're entirely GPU bound and we don't see that much of an FPS increase. For the Ryzen 7800X 3D build, we're gonna use a mid-range to hire an air cooler like the Thermorite Assassin 120 for $40, the same $140 B650 motherboard like the ASRock B650M Pro RS Wi-Fi, and the $100 kit of 2x16 gigabyte DDR5 6000 CL30. For the i7-14700K, good DDR5 Z690 and Z790 motherboards run right around $180 US to start, and we'll use the same DDR5 6000 CL30 kit for $100. We also want a higher performance air cooler like the Deepcool AK620, or consider a liquid cooler as well. You also likely need a much bigger power supply for the i7, but that will also depend on your GPU, and it's harder to calculate costs as there's a big jump in prices from 1000 watt units to 1200 watt and higher units, so I've left out that extra cost. That brings our upgrade cost for the 7800X 3D to $206 over the previous CPU tier, and for the i7-14700K, the upgrade cost is at least $271 more than the previous tier. For our GPU combos, for a minimum, I'd recommend the Radeon 7900 XT, currently selling for around $729, or the RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte, selling for about the same price. Now, ideally, we'd want the fastest GPU possible. So RX 7900 XTX for AMD, currently selling around $920, and the currently $2,000 RTX 4090. But I also really like the RTX 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabyte and 4080 Super here as well, paired with these higher performance CPUs. We've linked all of the CPUs and GPUs mentioned in this video down in that video description. So check out those links for current pricing and availability in your region. And of course, if you got value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, if you want a deeper dive into picking the best GPU for gaming 2024, check out this video where we go through the differences between AMD, Nvidia, and Intel GPUs, including features like FSR versus DLSS versus XCSS, and questions like, does it matter if you buy the cheapest GPU model or more premium one? And everything else you need to know to get the best GPU for gaming in 2024. And we'll catch you on the next one.